Hello students, it's Dr. Powers. We're going to go over the assignment for module two here. Uh, now, we're gonna talk through what you're expected to do and look at the uh, template and also go through the Excel work that you need to do. So this is gonna be a pretty thorough tutorial. So first off, the premise of this assignment is you are gonna be looking at real estate listings from around the world, or around the United States. Um, it, what you're specifically asked to do is choose a region of the country and pick a random sampling of 30 uh, real estate listings from that region of the country and perform your analysis on that random sample of 30. You'll have to calculate some statistics and uh, analyze the sample, compare it to national summary statistics, and uh, and create some uh, some plots, a scatter plot, uh, and uh, talk about the associations in the data. So, let's go through from the beginning. Uh, what you'll need to do is click on this link for the real estate data. This is going to download for you. An Excel file and I'm going I have it right down here I'm going to click on that it's going to open it up in Excel so here is the data I open it up and it is in protected view and I don't want it to be in protected view so I'm going to click enable editing okay so I'm going to be able to edit it now what we have is 1000 listings from a lot of different regions now I one the the thing you'll need to do is choose a region so that's the first thing that you're going to want to do Let's pick, let's gonna go down. We have west, east, northeast, west, north, central. West, north, central sounds fun. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the rows that say northeast and upwards. I'm gonna go all the way up, all the way to row six, and I'm going to delete these rows. If I click on to, actually you could, do it a couple ways, but I'm gonna I'm gonna right click on my PC or command click on the six row and delete. That's going to get rid of all of the rows and it's gonna slide this stuff up west, north, central. What I'm going to do now is let, go down to from mid Atlantic. I'm gonna go down to everything down below. To the end, we have Mountain, New England, Pacific delete that. All right. So what we've got now is we have a hundred or so listings from this region. We need to create a random sample from this region, a random sample of size 30. So here's the way we're going to do that. I'm going to create a new column called random. And in that column, I'm going to put random numbers. There's a function in Excel that generates random numbers. It's called the rand function. And to create a random number, and it's a random number between zero and one, and it's not technically random, it's pseudo-random, but that's kind of technical, we don't have to get into that. So, to, I'm going to select this cell, and I'm going to type in equals, and then R-A-N-D, and then I'm gonna add an open and a close parenthesis. That creates the function. It doesn't have to be capitalized, it can be lowercase letters, doesn't matter. Excel will capitalize it for me. This is what I do, I hit enter, that's going to create this random number. It's gonna be regenerated every time I change some uh, number somewhere in the spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is select this cell and I'm gonna grab, click on the little green uh, box in the corner and I'm going to slide that down and that and I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my data. Okay, right here. Okay, I have all of these random numbers. The way I'm going to shuffle, my random sample is going to be done by, I'm going to shuffle up my data and I'm going to then pick the top 30 rows. Uh, so, if, so it's just like shuffling up a deck of cards and dealing out the top 30 cards. So what I'm going to do is um, select I, I, anywhere in this block of stuff. I'm going to select the, the random uh, cell right here, uh, G5 for me. And I'm going to go to... Um, Let's go to data, okay, the data menu, sort, and from sort, I want to sort by random, smallest to largest. Okay, now, it, 
it would happen so quick. You hardly even see what happened. But you notice that the states are all shuffled around now, um, right? So that's great. I'm going to uh, now just go look at the top. Let's see. Since I'm going starting with row six, I'm going to go from uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values here and I'm going to from six down to 30. Yeah, row five down to 35. I'm going to copy that data, copy, and I'm going to add a new sheet and I'm going to paste that data there. Now I've got 31 values and I've got listing price. I don't need dollar per square foot, but I do need square feet. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to delete dollar per square feet. I'm going to click on this column and I'm going to right click or command click if you're on a Mac and I'm going to collect, uh, select delete and now that's gone. So I don't need that. This is great. Here's the problem. Excel needs, when I'm doing a, a scatter plot, Excel does not understand how to have the second column variable to be the X variable. For our purposes, it is absolutely essential. Square feet is the X or the predictor variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, either, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the, this column E. Again, I'm going to right click on it and say copy. Actually, cut is a better choice. Cut. All right, now I'm going to select column D and right click on it and insert cut cells. Now it's square feet and then listing price. This is perfect. This is what I want. Uh, and so from here, I'm going to do my first uh, piece of analysis, which is I'm going to create a scatter plot. And I just want to select those two columns. Um, I have square feet, then I have listing price. I'm going to select the titles and go scroll down to include the last line of data. Okay, I have my data selected. I'm going to go up to the insert menu and I'm going to insert under charts, one of these charts, this one is for scatter plots. I'm going to pick the first option, straightforward, nice and simple. Don't use any of, you see, you see these, these other options for the background. Don't use those, those are not nice. Just use the regular one, it's fine. Um, there's one option that has concentric circles. Don't ever use that, that's really hard to read. We don't want your, your plots to be hard to read or to create optical illusions in someone's eyes. So here's our data. We've got listing price uh, on the y-axis and we have square feet on the x-axis. It's perfect. Um, but we want to add a couple features to this plot. So I'm going to go over to the plus and here I can actually choose to add a trend line. Ooh, nice. And I'm actually going to click on this little arrow uh, for more options. And under more options, I'm going to scroll down a little bit because uh, there's, you can, can't really see very well here. I'm going to add display equation on the chart and display R squared on the chart. I don't need R squared right now, but I'll need it later. So I might as well get it now. So now we've got our, we've got our, uh, our, Scatter plot. it has a trend line and it has an, e, um, an, a linear equation in it. So we're going to be using that for doing predictions. So one of the questions will be asked is, uh, what is the predicted listing price for an 1800 square foot house? Okay, so the way we can do this is by using this equation. We're going to calculate uh, what is, we take this slope of $140.13 per square foot, 140.13 times 1800. And I'm going to add to that the intercept of 75,374. 75,374. That gives me my predicted listing price for a house that's 1800 square feet. This is what you should be doing. You should be using the linear equation that you get from Excel in order to do your prediction. Don't just eyeball it. Don't just say it's, oh, it's about 300. You can be more precise. You can, you can get the equation here. We didn't even have to use any formulas, type in any formulas to do that. We just added this to the chart 
as a feature of the scatter plot. So this is not, not too hard to do. All right. Now, um, as I said before, uh, well, th let's see. For this, for this assignment, um, for this assignment, this is all that you will be required to do as far as analysis in Excel. I want you to copy uh, this chart. We're going to be including this in our report. So actually, let's go back to the assignment on Brightspace. We'll we'll keep this scatter plot open. Okay. So um, if one thing you're going to need to do is open the module to assignment template. That's going to be a Word document template. And when you open it, it's also going to be it's also going to be in uh, it's in uh, ed, it's in protected mode. So we're going to enable that. Now all throughout this template you'll see there is a lot of bracketed text. Note, to complete this template, replace the bracketed text with your own content. Remove the, this note before you submit. Do that. Follow the instructions, please. Enter your name. My name is Brian Powers. Enter your name. Remove the bracketed text. I don't want to see any bracketed text when you submit this, please. Introduction. Include in this section a brief overview, including the purpose of the report. So do that. So write that there. A representative data sample. Present your simple random sample of 30. Include the region you selected from your sample. So I, I, I'm actually going to, I would, I'm not going to type it all out now, but um, I'm going to, oh, it's not centered. I don't want it centered. Please don't have your paragraph centered. Um, my representative data sample, let's, let's take that from Excel. I'm going to, uh, I can copy this and paste it into this document. Um, Uh, so you can include your whole sample in there and you can talk about how you generated the sample. I mean, you're going to ac actually be asked to do that. You're going to talk about how the regional sample was created, uh, how it's reflective of the national market. So we're, you're going to need to, I'm going to go back to the assignment in Brightspace. You'll see this other link for the national summary statistics and graphs. So you're asked to um, you're asked whether it's reflective of the national market or not. We have, uh, what I think what you can do is, let's go back to Excel and see. So we have our, for the square feet variable and listing price variable, let's calculate some statistics. For example, we can calculate the, the mean or the average uh, and the standard deviation, for example, um, and for each of those, and then we can compare those to the national market. So I'm going to uh, type in equals average to get the the mean or the average uh, equals average parenthesis and I'm going to select my data for square feet close the parenthesis and then I'm going to tap enter and I'm going to actually copy this equate this formula over to the next column to get the average for listing price um, and then I'm going to do for standard deviation it's equals stdev.s. That's the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation formula. I'll put in a parenthesis and do the same thing. I'm going to select the values. Okay, standard deviation of $1,065. And we've got a standard deviation for listing price. I'm sorry, that was in feet, square feet, 1,065 square feet. And the standard deviation for listing price is $153,000. Now, we can take those, we can compare those to the national market. We also are asked to talk about how we uh, got a random sample. Of course, you want to mention that you chose one region, and so if this, this region isn't representative of the national population, of course, this sample is not going to be representative of the national population, but it should be representative of this region because the sample was chosen randomly, right? Um, it, back to the template, it's, you're asked to include the scatter plot, include a trend line and a regression equation. So this is exactly what I calculated. I don't here. I don't want to center um, my paragraph. So I'm going to go back here to Excel, and I'm going to just just selecting this chart, hit Control C for copy or Command C, and paste it here. Um, my scatter plot is now in my in my report. This is exactly what I want. You're asked based on the graph to define each variable. The x variable is, is square feet. The y variable is listing price. 
uh, talk about why we're using listing price to predict, uh, why are we using square feet to predict listing price and not the other way around. And um, now here I can tell you that I see a positive association between these variables. You probably will as well. Uh, and then we'll include our prediction. We're asked if you had an 1800 square foot house based on the regression equation, what price would you choose? Okay, so those are the, those are the main things for this. Now I want you to remember uh, back in, in, in Brightspace, just be sure to go through the rubric and look at all of these categories in the rubric just to make sure that you've done everything you have in order to earn maximum points. Um, so in each of these categories, make sure that you do not only what's described in the proficient column, but you've also tried to exceed that in order to get 100%. So that should be everything you're going to need for this first assignment. Uh, all right. Bye-bye.